What's up, Esquire Philippines? My name is Louis Tan, and we are going to discuss some of the films and TV shows of my career so far. Fast and the Furious 3, Tokyo Drift. This was an amazing project by a director named Justin Lin. I was a big fan of Justin Lin's work because he did a movie called Better Luck Tomorrow, I believe right out of film school. And uh, it was an indie film, but at this time it was very rare to see like an all Asian cast, very cool dramatic movie. Another actor who was in that movie, who was also in Fast and the Furious, his name is Sung Kang. And I just loved how much swagger that he would bring to his roles, especially in the role in Fast and the Furious. And so it was very special that I got to work on this movie. Now earlier, this is way earlier in my career, and I was still going to acting school, I was studying martial arts, I was studying gymnastics, I was learning how to be a stunt performer in every single area possible. One of those areas is uh, stunt driving. So we used to go to this place called Rick Siemens. It's a stunt course where you would go there and they would have all these old beat up cars and you would take these cars and you would learn basically how to do uh, different techniques like reverse 180s, you would drift up into a point where you would come really close to a cone and you would mimic all these things that you would eventually end up using on the big screen one day. So I got the opportunity to work on Fast and the Furious 3. Um, I didn't get to do any of the incredible technical, super technical stunt driving because I was still a beginner at the time. Um, and I, I was in this scene in this underground parking lot that was supposed to be in Tokyo. We shot it in Los Angeles. And uh, there was a huge party with like 400 extras. Everybody's dancing and having fun and drinking and we're like drifting these cars around people. I remember I got to drive a uh, beautiful yellow NSX that was just stunning. At the time I had like long hair. I had it in like a little samurai ponytail. And um, yeah, it was a very, very cool experience. CSI New York. This was a funny one. So when you're starting out as an actor, God bless CSIs because there's a ton of different CSIs in every different city. There's CSI New York, there's NCIS Los Angeles, there's CSI Miami, there's CSI Vegas, there's CSI for every city. And that was kind of like mine and many other actors, I'm sure, your starting ground to kind of build up a resume, build up a demo reel, and every time I got one of those jobs, I always tried to do something really unique with the character just to stand out. So this particular job, I was playing a paintballer. At that time, I was paintballing quite often, so it uh, was something that I was very familiar with. And my character gets into some trouble, with, he's paintballing, he gets into some trouble with some drugs, and he ends up getting killed like later on in the, in the episode. So. In order to stand out at the time, I would try to make really bold decisions in the casting room and, you know, um, hopefully they would remember me for these decisions. So I don't recommend doing this, but I do remember entering the audition room with my paintball gun pointed already at everyone in the room in the camera and I just started the scene and they were all just kind of looking at me and a little bit shocked and I played out the scene, we did the, the rest of the dialogue and then I like just awkwardly left and they were just staring at me like, what the hell did we just watch? And I was like, okay, well I'm never going to get that role and they are going to call my agents and tell me that I'm not allowed to come back. And um, sometimes you gotta risk it to get the biscuit. I ended up getting that role and they obviously remembered me for it, and um, it was a cool, it was a very cool experience. What would you do? What would any of you be willing to do? Pirates of the Caribbean Three. At this point in my career, I have a few credits on different television shows and a few credits as a stuntman on different movies, and I was pursuing my career as an actor. I was doing plays and. Um, I got the opportunity to be a stuntman on Pirates of the Caribbean 3. And at the time it was just, you couldn't say no to this opportunity. I was gonna go to the Bahamas for 
two to three months and work with Gore Verbinski, Johnny Depp, Orlando Bloom, Keira Knightley on one of the biggest franchises of all times. So I had to do it and I'm really glad that I did. My father actually was on this job as well. So this was a particularly special experience for me because I got to go to the Bahamas, be surrounded by these incredible artists and filmmakers, as well as work with my father. And man, it was a lot of work. So what we were doing is Chow Yun-Fat was playing one of the main bad guy, bad pirates. And he had a whole pirate gang of like Singaporean pirates or Asian pirates. And that's also kind of like my family's history and legacy. Like, you know, my father is Chinese, my mother is English, but on my Chinese side, there's a long history of into our family where there were some people that were actually pirates. So maybe I have some real pirate blood in me. And uh, I got to go to the Bahamas. Every day we're dressing up like these disgusting, <laughs> dirty pirates. And they, I remember they would stick like this fake dirt in your teeth, in your hair, in your nails. And you were just like, you were, just, you were living in like filth basically. And we were shooting on the real, in the ocean, in the Bahamas, on these incredible boats. And I was basically living on this boat for months. And you felt like you were really living the pirate life for sure. And I, I remember there's this one scene where um, Bill Nye, who's playing uh, Davy Jones, is basically chasing us. And we have this long like line, this like long rope that's connecting these two boats. And we're like shimmying across the two boats and we're, we're like hanging over maybe 40 feet um, over the ocean. And it's like me and like 15 other stunt guys, Kieran Knightley's like right next to me. And then Bill Nye comes out and he's wearing like full, you know, motion capture dots all over his face. And he's just crushing it. I mean, he's such a phenomenal actor. And he like cuts this rope or shoots this rope and the rope snaps. And in the middle of the ocean, this, we just fall down all the way into the, in, into the water. And keep in mind, we're, you, you know, this is not a set. This is like, we're in the ocean, the real ocean. And they have these, these people in the water, they call them like frogs, but they're these guys who are like looking out to make sure that, you know, safety, they're like safety guys in, in the water. And um, I remember thinking to myself, man, like anything could be in this water. And like the water's going in my boots in the leather and like I'm trying to keep my boots on as I'm like swimming to the other side of the boat and they're like pulling me up and like my pants are falling off, the boots are falling off, my hair piece is falling off, I got this sword, I got this gun and I remember thinking to myself, what if there's like sharks in this water and who's gonna really save me if, if, if there was sharks in the water? <coughs> Turns out there was sharks in the water and uh, thankfully none of us got bit. But yeah, that was a wild, that was a wild experience. My name's Rusty, but I go by Shatterstar. Deadpool 2. So I got a call from David Leach, the director, and he explained to me that he would like me to play this role of Shatterstar from the X-Force. I was familiar with the X-Force, but I wasn't completely familiar with Shatterstar's backstory at the time. So I did a little bit of research and the character was just so interesting. He comes from this planet Mojo world and he has, you know, all these kind of like amazing special abilities, but he's in this planet where it's almost like a gladiator sort of setting, but in this kind of like Mad Max dystopian world where they have all these CCTV cameras everywhere and they like show these crazy battles on like television just for fun, like battles to the death. So I was like, that sounds incredible. And then obviously I'm a huge fan of the original Deadpool movie and a big fan of Ryan Reynolds and a big fan of David Leach. So yeah, I had to do the film obviously. There's a lot of secrecy surrounding these types of movies. 
So I had really no idea what exactly we were going to be doing or where this storyline was going to go in regards to uh, Shatterstar. So if you haven't seen the movie, spoiler alert, stop this video right now. Um, but I didn't know that Shatterstar was gonna have a very untimely death. Now having said that, there has been a lot of talk online and a lot of fans that support Shatterstar coming back and doing more with that show and exploring that journey a little bit more. <laughs> so yeah, I, uh, it was great to work with Ryan and I mean, the guy's truly hilarious and constantly coming up with incredible improv and he's just uh, so cool. But I remember, I remember sitting on the helicopter with, um, with Terry Crews, who my father worked with a long time ago. <laughs> And uh, Terry's just a riot, man. So we got Zazzy Beats there. We got Bill Skarsgård. I'm sitting there with Terry Crews, and we're just like, I'm wearing this long, heavy red wig and um, these contacts, and I can barely see out of the contacts. And I'm supposed to like jump out of this this helicopter onto a, onto like a crash mat um, with these swords, and these boots, and this hair, and it's getting in my face. And uh, yeah, that was that was uh, that was a very fun character to play. I think if if um, we can explore Shatterstar some more, I might go for the short-haired look next time. Into the Badlands. So I got a call. Actually, I got a uh, <laughs> I got a tweet. It was like a DM. Um, from Algo and Miles Millar, the showrunners. Um, they saw some of my work on Iron Fist, playing the uh, drunken master, and um, they said, hey, we, we think that um, there's an opportunity for you to come work on Into the Badlands. Into the Badlands is very special to me in many ways, more than I can say, but it was also my first leading role in the series. And it's also a very special series because the showrunners and the studios created something very unique where they brought Hong Kong style action, martial arts, truly the way that they would do it in Hong Kong with the same teams that they were doing it with. The legendary master Didi, Andy Chang, who was Jackie Chan's stunt double and just legends of the action world over to do a Western TV series, but shot the exact same way that they would do it in Hong Kong, with the same type of wire work, with the same um, style of choreography and camera work and editing. And it just really, to this day, I don't know if it's been topped as far as martial art action is concerned on television. I still think it's one of the greatest um, of all times maybe the greatest for TV series. And um, I yeah, had a really, really unique experience. I was super nervous because <laughs> the guys are so iconic. And uh, my first fight scene that I did was with Dean Charles Chapman in the scene where I fight him with the sword. And he's, he has this like crazy superpower and he's coming at me and we have this like long one shot where we do about 40 or 50 moves in one take. And it's just, Oh, it was just crazy. And I remember I kept going back to the to the camera, watch the dailies, watch the rushes, um, which means like you're just watching the playback of, of what you just did. And <laughs> I normally don't do that when I'm performing, when I'm acting, I don't, I, I don't do that. But when I'm doing action stuff, I like to do that because I can change the angle slightly. I can make my performance better. And I was super nervous because uh, I wanted to do a good job for this one. And I remember Andy Chang coming up to me and be like, he call, I call him uncle, he calls me nephew. So he's like, nephew, come here. He's like, you don't need to keep looking at this camera. Like, you have to just trust me. Do you trust me? And I was like, yes, Andy, of course, I trust you. So yeah, I just gave up and stopped. And sure enough, still one of my favorite fight scenes to this day. And it's a great show because you know, you have a very diverse cast and you have an incredible lead like Daniel Wu, who really set an amazing example on set. And um, he's just a great guy in, in the series and uh, in real life as well. 
So Into the Badlands will always be one of my favorite experiences of all time. Whatever happens, I got your back. Her family, high brothers, dog fam. We up in China town. Chop chop. Wu Assassins. What can I say about Wu Assassins? This is a project that's very dear to my heart because it is one of the first or the first all Asian Netflix original. Um, I got to work with some incredible actors on that series and John Worth, who created the show, gave us such a beautiful platform and a beautiful open um, line of communication to him to be able to discuss how to truly represent that Asian American culture. So this is not just like Asians um, who are living in Asia, they're, they're from San Francisco, you know, they have these, these in-depth relationship dynamics that at the time really I hadn't really seen before on screen so I was very proud of getting to uh, be a part of that for the emotional journey and for telling a unique Asian American story about family but also I was proud of it because I got to work with Iko Uais and the Uais team and I'm not don't know if you're familiar with Iko Uais, I'm sure you are, but he's the actor in The Raid and he's an incredible uh, martial artist who does a style from Indonesia called Silat. He's one of the Silat masters and The Raid is still to this day one of the greatest action films of all times. If you haven't seen it, just stop the video and just go watch The Raid and then come back and listen to the rest of the video. And getting to work with someone like him and I've been so fortunate in my career to get to work with like incredible legends who I respect so highly and they've taught me so much that I get to take and use that in my roles and I get to take and use that in the way that I perform choreography. So I learned a lot from him, got to work with him and then also we got to follow up the TV series with Fistful of Vengeance, the Netflix original film and we shot that in Thailand. And I really think it was unique because the way that we got to shoot and perform all this action on Wu Assassins, but condensed into a movie format. And I think it worked really beautifully. I mean, I think after the opening of the movie, I think there's like a 45 to 50 minute action scene that just never stops, it just keeps going it's towards the end. So to say it's action packed is an understatement. And I'll never forget the, uh, the family that I made on the Wu Assassins and I'm still friends with all of them to this day. We talk all the time. They annoy me a lot. Kip, what do you want? My tux, I texted you, I was coming. I didn't get it, I, I blocked you. A bit soon, don't you think? Goodbye. Just let me get my tux and I'll be good. About fate. Well, this was the first film that I wasn't covered in blood by the end of it. So that was good. But no, um, basically I was sick and tired of everybody just saying, do a rom-com, do a rom-com. I'm like, all right guys, I'll do a rom-com. Just let me find one that I feel connected to and I feel is right for me. And this script came my way. It's based off a classic Russian film called The Irony of Fate. And when I read it, I thought, this is beautiful. It's timeless. Um, it has all those kind of classic elements uh, that are in the rom-com movies that I grew up watching, that I really love. Um, and I thought that this is the perfect one for me. I was very excited to work with Emma Roberts, who played that role so beautifully. And it was nice not going to bed, feeling like I got hit by a truck and <laughs> having to get up in the morning and, you know, perform this crazy fight scene. And um, it was a completely different experience it was difficult in a way that it was just hard not to laugh at all the takes and um, to do improv with everyone and have the comedic timing and just like we had so much fun on set. It was just it was just a great experience. It was super fun. And yeah, I would love to do more rom-coms in the future because, well, I wasn't sore, so it's much easier. Mortal Kombat. Wow. 
That's a big one. Um, there's so much to say about this film. It's very difficult to just talk about it in a short period of time because it means so much to me. Um, I, what I will say is my father started with Warner Brothers Studios on uh, Tim Burton's Batman. So this was a very full circle moment for me to get to uh, be a part of such a huge franchise and have my father there, my mother there, um, watching on set when we were filming in Australia. It meant so much to me. It means so much to me as a martial artist myself, having trained for years and getting to showcase that on such a big platform and perform all those fights, that meant so much to me and part of, you know, my father's legacy and taking that to the next level um, was very, very, very special. Uh, also very, very, very difficult. And, you know, also leading in this type of film and playing a character that's not even in the video game, extremely challenging. Um, there's so many iconic characters that Mortal Kombat has created. And I grew up playing the, that game with my brothers till, you know, the wee hours of the morning and hiding in from mom and just like trying to do, memorize all the fatalities. And um, these are characters that they've created that have lasted the test of time that are beloved, you know, by millions around the world. So getting to just act and staring across the screen at Sub-Zero or Scorpion or Raiden and these amazing actors and Hiroyuki Sonata and Joe Taslam and Tadanobo Asano and these guys who are just like, they're just larger than life in, in my eyes. So getting to share the screen with them, getting to perform and getting to be a part of that iconic film uh, would always be very, very, very special to me um, for so many different reasons. And uh, man, I was very, very sore by the end of that movie. <sighs> sore is, a, is an understatement. Crazy to do, uh, but I would say my favorite scene to film was the finale with Sub-Zero and Scorpion. Not only because I got to work with two uh, actors um, and martial artists who I respect so highly, Hiroyuki Sonata and Joe Taslam, but because that scene is kind of when for the first time, you can see Cole Young really come into um, his own. He's not, not only dealing with the pressure of his family's lives on the line, his daughter's life on the line, but he's stepping into a more heroic stage and more, more courageous, confident dynamic that you were waiting for him to kind of achieve and unlock for this entire journey of, of the film. And uh, we shot uh, really, really incredible choreography all through that gym. And um, not everything got to uh, make it into the final cut, but um, it was a, it's still my favorite fight scene of the movie. Shadow and Bone, season two. And I got the hard copy of the book, in case I need to pop somebody with it. No, I'm just kidding, I would never do that. Lee Bardugo, I would never hit anybody with this book. What an incredible book series that she wrote and what a phenomenal show it is. I saw the first season and I was blown away by the diverse um, actors, the really fleshed out journeys that they go on, the amazing VFX and the CGI, and yeah, I had to be a part of it and I had to play Tolia because Tolia has the best hairstyle out of everyone except maybe Jesper. Um, so yeah, I think that this is, a, it was such a, an honor to be a part of this amazing cast and crew. I'm a huge fan of Eric Heiser, the showrunner, his work as a writer. Um, if you've seen the movie Arrival, he wrote that film. It's very um, phenomenally written film. And I think that getting to work with that team was very special. We shot in, Hungary, Budapest, and I really fell in love with the city. I thought it was a, a beautiful place to work and some incredible architecture and incredible scenery there. So we had a lot of fun shooting this and yeah, it became like a little family. And um, I'm very, very happy that, ooh, what is this here? Oh, 
I may or may not have stolen this from set. I don't know how it ended up in this book. Um, but yeah, Shattered Bone is an incredible series. I'm, I got to play a twin and that was very cool to get to explore the dynamics of playing a twin. Shout out to my, uh, my big sister, Anna Leong Brophy, who plays Tamar. And I thought it was cool to get to explore the, the, the dynamics of playing a twin. And having done a lot of research and talked to twins, there's almost like a sixth sense psychic connection that they have with each other. And I think that that was really cool to explore, not only emotionally, but also in the way that we fight. So when I fight, when Toya and Tamar fight together, they almost like move as one as they're fighting. And it's a very incredible thing to get to experience and perform and something that I haven't yet done before. Shadow and Bone season two on Netflix. Thank you guys for chatting with me. It's been fun.